An elderly woman returned home from a Sunday night worship service and found an intruder in her house. So she yelled at him, Stop! Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus so that your sins may be forgiven. And he stopped in his tracks. She called the police. They came. And as the officer was cuffing the man, he asked him, he said, why did you just stand there? All the lady did was, was to yell a scripture to you. And the thief replied, Scripture? She said she had an axe and two thirty eights. <laughs> you might want to remember that, folks. It might come in handy, okay? Uh, you might not have to do the verse, but just do Acts 2.38. <laughs> uh, there was another couple, a very timid couple, actually, uh, who wanted to be involved in the visitation team at their church. And so they went for the first time and and uh, they got their assignments, and uh, they, they were just really petrified about going out and doing this. And the pastor sensed that, so he told him, he said, now, pray before every visit. So they went. A few days later, the pastor saw this couple, and uh, he asked them how their visits went. And they answered, Pastor, you were right. Prayer works. We prayed before every visit that no one would be home, and they weren't. <laughs> uh, I don't have to do that. I think, I'm beginning to think somebody's tipping off these people I go to visit. They, they're either not at home or they don't open the door, okay? Uh, one place yesterday, I could hear TV or radio or something, but uh, nobody came to the door. I don't. They may have. They may just do that to make people think there's somebody there. I don't know. But anyway, um, this is that that kind of prayer was not what the pastor had in mind. But there are some things that we might keep in mind. Uh, I hope we will keep in mind as we uh, as we learn to uh, to be uh, to share the good news of Jesus. Uh, I want to share some principles with you that come from uh, Acts chapter 8 uh, that, uh, that we see in Philip. Now, Philip was uh, one of the first deacons. If you look in Acts 6, I think there were seven of them that were called as the first deacons in that early church. And there was also a man named Stephen. And uh, Stephen was one of the one of the first deacons also. But Stephen was martyred. He was stoned to death by the Jewish, by a Jewish mob because he was preaching Jesus, okay? And when that happened, there were many other people who left Jerusalem because of the persecution that had began. And uh, Philip was one of those. And he went to a, a city in Samaria, and there he... He ministered the word. He shared Jesus with people. Uh, he cast out demons and he healed those who were lame. And then he and Peter and John got together and they traveled back to Jerusalem. And as they did that, they would, they would uh, preach Jesus, share Jesus uh, with uh, the people of the village. And that brings us to uh, verse 26 of chapter 8 of of Acts. And we see the first principle here for effective evangelism. And that first principle is sensitivity. Let's read that scripture. An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert road. So he got up and he went. There was an Ethiopian man, a eunuch, and a high official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to worship in Jerusalem and was sitting in his chariot on his way home, reading the prophet Isaiah aloud. 
the Spirit told Philip, go and join that chariot. Philip was sensitive to the Lord's direction through the angel of the Lord and also through the Holy Spirit. And he had this sensitivity because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And folks, when we are filled with the Spirit, we are more sensitive to do what our Lord has called us to do. As we pray, as we worship, as we allow God's Word and His hymns, yes, and His hymns speak to us, we become more sensitive to the Lord's leadership in our lives. And there's something else that will help us to become more sensitive, and I hope that you are doing this with your Who's Your One prayers, and that is to pray for them, for your, your one by name. Pray for them by name. That is important. And we also become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit's guidance when we are obedient to our Lord. He, he, he wants us to be obedient to Him because He knows what is best for us. And He knows the work that He's given us. And we need Him and we need His guidance in that. And we need to be obedient. So to reach people for Christ, we must be sensitive to the Lord's direction in our lives. Now the second principle is availability. Verses 26 and the first part of 27. An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he got up and went. The angel of the Lord gave Philip his marching orders. And so he was obedient and he went where the angel of the Lord told him to go. Philip went because he was, he was available. He was ready and he was capable to do this assignment. Philip, Philip may have had other things to do. Like we do, you know, we always have something we can do. But he, he did the most important thing because he was sold out to his Lord Jesus Christ. He was available. Now, to be available means we're to be ready at any moment to share the good news of Jesus with people. Someone has said that the best ability there is is availability. And the Lord calls us. The Lord calls us to be available, to prepare ourselves so that we can reach people for Him. To reach people for Jesus, we must be available when He calls. The third principle is initiative. Verses 29 and 30. The Spirit told Philip, go and join that chariot. And when Philip ran up to it, he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, and he said, do you understand what you're reading? Philip obeyed the Lord's command. He was sensitive, and he was available for that opportunity. And if we are sensitive, and if we are available, the Lord will give us opportunities, but folks, we have to seize those opportunities. We have to have the initiative to communicate with people about our Lord. We must take the initiative to act. There are many examples in Scripture of those who took advantage of opportunities. Of course, Jesus always did. And once his disciples had become spirit-filled, they took advantage of the opportunities that came before them. The uh, Jerusalem church members took the initiative to minister to people. They're in that early church 
in, uh, in Jerusalem. And many, many people were brought to the Lord through their sharing of, uh, about their Savior, Jesus Christ. And those who left Jerusalem, not only did they go to Samaria and Judah, but they, they went to other parts of the world. And as they did, they told people about Jesus and how He could save them from their sins and give them eternal life forever. Taking the initiative means we're to be prepared to take advantage of the opportunities that come to us. You notice, notice here what uh, Philip did or what he saw uh, the, uh, the Ethiopian eunuch doing. He saw that he was reading and he took the initiative to go up to that chariot and asked the man a question, which was, do you understand what you're reading? Folks, there are all sorts of questions we can ask to begin conversations with people that would lead to our sharing the gospel. This past Wednesday night, we started uh, going through a little booklet that uh, I had been given uh, by uh, the Kentucky Baptist Convention. I had several of them. I gave out all that I had. And, uh, but there are more available. And these have questions and things for you to think about in this booklet uh, that can help you in starting a gospel conversation with someone. And they are available. And if you want one, there is a, a sign-up sheet over here. It's a yellow sheet. Just write your name down there, and I will get you a copy. It will be a copy that I make here, but uh, because all the other copies are gone. But uh, be glad for you to have one. I hope you will use it. To reach people for Christ, we must take the initiative and seize the opportunities that come before us to share Christ. The fourth principle is tactfulness. Verses 30 and 31. When Philip ran up to the chariot, he heard the Ethiopian eunuch reading the prophet Isaiah, and he said, Do you understand what you're reading? And he answered, How can I unless someone guides me? So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Philip's question was tactful. It was considerate. And it was a gentle question. And Peter tells us in his first letter, chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, if someone asks about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it but do this in a gentle and respectful way. Paul tells us in 2 Timothy 4.2 that we are to share the gospel with patience. It does take patience, uh, when, especially when, you, uh, when you're dealing with people that might be a little difficult. They just need to be patient. Now, you know, this Ethiopian would not have allowed... Philip up in his chariot if Philip had said you don't know what you're reading do you sinner man hmm. let me up there I'll, I'll explain it to you I know the Bible we can't, we can't be rough and gruff Okay, we have got to be gentle we have got to be patient we have got to be considerate to reach people for Christ we must be tactful or as the North American Mission Board President uh, Ezel, I believe is his last name, wrote in the, the prayer guide, uh, we must be winsome. We must be winsome. The fifth principle is precision. Verses 32 through 35. Now the scripture passage he was reading was this. 
He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will describe his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. The eunuch replied to Philip, I ask you, who is the prophet saying this about, himself or another person? So Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning from that scripture. Now, a little aside here, uh, Lois had heard uh, Liz Curtis speak uh, this week on the internet or something she, she had pulled up. And she was talking about when she came to know Jesus as her Savior and Lord, and she had lived a pretty rough life before that. Uh, she had a boyfriend. He, he came in, and, and so she told, she said she shared the gospel with him from Genesis to Revelation. And he left, and he didn't come back. <laughs> so maybe, maybe she didn't need him. But anyway, uh, Philip explained the scripture uh, to him, beginning, and he began with that scripture. You know, the questions that, uh, that people ask can lead us to start a gospel conversation. When we are asked questions about the Bible, we need to be precise. We need to be clear and accurate with our answers. And folks, don't fake it. If you don't know, just tell them you don't know. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's better than faking it and, and get something wrong. Tell them that hey, I'll try to find out and get back to you. And be precise when you do. Being precise calls us to be prepared. And folks, there are resources to help us be prepared. There are witnessing uh, tracts and booklets, mark New Testaments, and even our testimonies can help us keep on track when we are sharing the good news of Jesus. It will help us to be precise. And folks, to reach people for Jesus, we must be precise. The sixth principle is decisiveness. Verses 36 through 38. As they were traveling down the road, they came to some water. The eunuch said, look, there's water. What would keep me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And the eunuch replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. very important that once we have shared the good news with folks, whether it be through our testimony or it be through a marked New Testament or uh, one of those uh, witnessing tracts, that you give an invitation, that you ask them to make a decision. And, and this is where the, the witnessing uh, tracts come in handy because they, they have that written in there. You, you could, if you have a Mark New Testament that you use or would use, then you could write that question in there once you have made the presentation also. And uh, by the way, I think that um, that handout I was talking about, the uh, 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 Witnessing Conversations, the, the Evangelistic Conversations booklet, uh, I think it might have some in there that would, that would help you, some information that would help you with that. If we are to reach people for Jesus Christ, we must ask for a decision. We have been divinely called, folks, divinely called to share the good news of Jesus with people who do not know Him. Are we answering that call? Are we ready and available. Are we willing to get ready and to be available? 
this, these principles of effective evangelism calls us to become available, sensitive, to take the initiative, to be tactful, to be precise, and to ask for a decision. Resources are available. I've mentioned some this morning. There are others that are coming. The mixed adult Sunday school class on Sunday mornings and the Wednesday night prayer group will be starting a study called Empowered. We will do that when the handbooks arrive. They have been ordered. Uh, it's a, uh, I think it's a seven session uh, study. It's video driven. It was something that was given to me by the, uh, uh, well, came through, I guess, the Kentucky Baptist Convention through the association. Uh, the kit was free, but I had to order the handbook. So we will be starting on that soon. There are other studies that will be coming our way uh, that will help us to train to be uh, witnesses for our Lord and Savior. Uh, and... Uh, you know, some of those could be done at other times. If, if the times that we have, when I mentioned Sunday school and I mentioned uh, Wednesday nights, that's not convenient for you. We can make other times available for you. Just let me know. Let me know uh, what, what day or what time is better for you. And we'll see if we can, can uh, put that together. Also keep in mind that I am willing to go with anyone who has someone they'd like to uh, share the gospel with. That's how I learned I went with someone else, uh, my a former pastor. And uh, probably one of the best ways to learn, uh, I've always said on-the-job training is the best way to learn. And uh, that's, that's what that would be. Jesus was beaten. He was punished for our sin. And he paid the price that we should have paid for our sin. And because he has paid that price, if we will trust in him, and we will tell him, admit to him that we need him and we need his forgiveness, then he will save us. If we will call on him to be our Savior and Lord, he will save us. And that being saved is for all eternity. Doesn't mean that everything goes smoothly the rest of your life. Not at all. But, that life will be more meaningful if you give your life to Jesus Christ. Let us pray.